Welcome to this short video tutorial on working in projects with CodeBeamer. Today we will learn how to set up a new project, how to assign members to roles, how to change the project settings, how the dependency graphs can visualize the interdependencies between work items, and how to draw baselines. First of all, what is a project in CodeBeamer? CodeBeamer data is organized into projects. Projects are secure, collaborative workplaces where users can share, discuss, contribute, coordinate and find information. A registered CodeBeamer user can set up a new project, provided he has sufficient rights. When a user creates a new project, the project administrator role is assigned to that user. Typically, the project administrator is responsible for managing project resources. On this screen you can create your new project. You can decide if your project should be based on a template or if it should be a completely new project. We're gonna create a new project in order to develop a medical device. Give it a title, a short key. Here you can set your project as a template for further projects. I'm gonna make this available and give it a short description. I want to develop a surgery robot. Further down, you can select what category your project should belong to. This could be collaborative, database, education, scrum or any other project. So we're going to select a collaborative project. You can define and start an end date for each of your projects. It's going to start on Monday and should end next month on the 31st. On the source code tab, you can add source code from your version control system, but this is content of another tutorial video. So let's create our first project. The first page you will see is the wiki side of the project. On the wiki side, you can enter information that give a general description what your project is about. Of course, every project needs members and roles, so we're gonna switch to the Members tab and assign some members to the already existing roles, developer, project admin and stakeholder. Clicking on New Members lets you select members from your company staff. Let's take this colleague and assign him as a developer and as a second project admin next to myself. Also, the stakeholder role is still empty, so we're gonna select another colleague and assign him as a stakeholder. Each role can be assigned specific permissions. So when I get over to edit role, you can see a whole bunch of permissions that can be associated to each and every role. This lets you define who is able to do what within your project later on. From the admin tab, you have the possibility to set your project as private, public with joint approval or completely public. When the project is set to private, only you can associate other project members. No one can join and no one can request a join. When it's set to public with approval, users can send you a request to join and you can approve it or not. When it's set to public, Every user can join your project anytime. Further down, you can tell what role a new user should be assigned to by default. Within a project, you're going to be working with so called trackers. Trackers are artifacts that represent different work items like bugs, change requests, requirements, tasks, or tests. As we are in a new project right now, nothing of all is set up, so we're going to switch to another project quickly for demonstration purpose. In this other project you can see that there is already some work done, and we see that we have some bugs, change requests and requirements set up. To demonstrate the relationships between these work items, we can view the tracker dependency graph. 
This graph visualizes the interdependencies between the different work items and you can immediately see which platform a tracker is associated to. When you have a complex project, this will give you an easy overview and you can track all the relationships between your work items. Another possibility to track the relationships is from within the tracker itself. This is the task tracker for instance. You can see all the tasks that have been created within my tracker and I want to see the workflow that each and every task has to go through. This graph visualizes the workflow. You can see that the new item goes from unset to new, in progress, can be completed or suspended. And whenever you add a new workflow item, this graph will update itself dynamically. Whenever you have uh, finished the release, you want to draw a baseline. A baseline freezes the status of your project to a certain point in time. This includes documents, wiki sections, trackers and interdependencies between them. We call this baseline project start. Baselines are very important for the full traceability of your project. Each baseline lets you jump back in time to see what the project was in, what status it was in at that certain point in time. You have also the possibility to archive your projects so they won't be able to be changed or read by other persons later on. This concludes our short video tutorial on working with projects. I hope you enjoyed it and I'd like to welcome you soon in another video tutorial. Thank you, goodbye. Please find more information, other interesting videos and a free trial version of CodeBeamer on our website www.indland.com.